Chris, Nick. Yes. Buying cop for a football terrace in the north of England doesn't seem right, does it? Okay. Well, it wasn't originally called the Spying Cop. Its original name was Walton Breck Road End, which is a bit more mundane, a bit more north of England. It gets its name from a battle that took place in South Africa during the Colonial War, the uh, Second World War. There was, a pl there was a place called Ladysmith that was held by the Dutch settlers, the, uh, the Boers, and there was a hill outside. And the British Army, being what it was in 1900, decided to attack the hill. Okay? Now, the battle was a disaster. On the first day, hundreds were killed. In the course of the next four days, many more were killed and wounded. And it was a huge national scandal in the press. Uh, in the press at the time. How can these Boers de defeat the might of the British Empire? One of the regiments involved, the Lancashire Fusiliers, they recruited in Liverpool, and a lot of the soldiers who signed up, they lied about their age. But they wanted to escape the poverty, they wanted to escape the disease, the slums they lived in, where they worked, the docks and the factories. They wanted to adventure, they didn't realise what it was going to be like. And when the soldiers came back, of course they came to the football. That's what we've done, that's what we still do, don't we? To escape the war, to get away from the missus. We all came back the game, and this was just a big grassy hill. And they said it reminded them where they'd lost so many of their friends and comrades. They gave it the nickname, Spying Cop, okay? 1906, it actually becomes a terrace, okay? Designed to hold 30,000 supporters. Then, in 1928, well, you get a howling gale off the Irish Sea here in the winter. It's a protected crowd. We'll put a roof on it, seems sensible enough. But that roof was a master stroke because it just amplified the noise that the scousers made underneath it. It was just an unbelievable noise. And it stayed that way to 1994. No place to watch a game then, no place to like to watch it now. His first game in the cup tonight, so. First game in the cup? In the cup. Whoa. Oh, yeah, nothing like it. But if it was a standing top, if you wanted to watch the game, you had to be part of it. We have another song we sing about having dreams and songs to sing. It's the fields of Aaron Rye, about a player called Stevie Highway. If you wanted to see Highway, he played on that wing. Well, with 30,000 people standing, the only way you're going to see him was by moving, moving over. Now, the ball of football switches over here, say to Ian Callaghan or Kevin Keegan. Well, it was like that, pivoting. If somebody attacked the goal, it all rushed down like that. If somebody scored, I used to dream of being Kevin Keegan scoring into the cop end. This place, it was unbridled joy. Those fans would go off like a 10 bob rocket on bonfire night. It was just ridiculous, the joy. If somebody, I used to dream of being Kevin Keegan scoring into I've got to be honest. If somebody had the temerity to score against Liverpool into the cop goal, well, for a second, you could hear a pin drop. Could they fall silent, shock, horror? What's happened? Then to a man, the Liverpool supporters would go, Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool. And it would just boom <coughs> out on all the great players you've just seen, you know, on European Boulevard, Ray Clements, Emily Hughes, Phil Thompson, all those men, they would go to each other, we've got to do something, and we'd always get a goal back, and we'd always win. Well, it felt like that, didn't it? Yeah. Never the most sanitised place in the world. It was never going to be. There were only two blocks of toilets. One in that corner and one in that corner. Now, no tickets, okay? And you had to get in early, okay? You had to get in early to get a good vantage point. And where are you going to meet? Well, no mobile phones. We'll meet in the pub. Now, wherever you're from, Texas or wherever, you don't get you around in. You're tight, aren't you? So, you've got about three or four pints. You're in early. Cold, gravity's going to have an effect. Now, what normally happened was you'd hear a voice behind you. Normally, from an old docker who'd finished early and was getting, been on the beer ever since, and you'd hear, Make a space. Now, you did your best to make a space because if you couldn't make a space, you ended up with something very warm <laughs> and very wet on the back of your leg. That was known as a cough poppet. Down here was Chris and the Yellow Mersey, but it gave you everything for the cough. It gave you camaraderie, gave you a sense of humour, gave you a sense of identity. Bill Shankly would say, if you stood on the cop, you're part of a big club and a big society, you're never without a friend. And he was right, he called this the 12th man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I talk a lot, don't I, about Bill Shankly and Bob Paisley, because they give me the best years of my life now with a young man. 
Now, remember when I told you when we started, we were Liverpool, when Shankly and Paisley was his assistant manager, we were 12th in the second division. Do you think if they were sitting where you're sitting now, with Joe Fagan as well, the scouser, and they looked out of this stadium, do you think they might be proud of what they started? The provincial set, I think so, don't you? And look at everything they've won. Think they'd be really proud? Now, Shankly, when he retired from Liverpool, it was seismic. Nobody could believe it. The thought was unthinkable. He regretted it instantly. But seven years later, officially, very fit when he retired, he actually died of a heart attack. Uh, but we all know it wasn't a heart attack for a Liverpool supporter. It was a broken heart. His ashes were scattered into this goal to be with his beloved top lads. Where you're going to get that in any other stadium. And that's why in these specials, you never doubt a friend if you're a Liverpool supporter. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of me, I hope you enjoyed the tour. We'll take you around the museum. Lots more for you to see. If you're staying in the city tonight, enjoy our city. Have a great time. Just hope you get a result for you all. If it's your first game, especially late in this first game here, have a great time. Apart from me, Gordon, apart from my great friend Craig uh, Terry, thanks for coming round. Listen to our authentic scouts, gibberish. It's been lovely to meet you. And remember, up the Reds. Come on, I'll take you to the museum.